When working with CSS, one of the factors to evaluate the quality of your code or not, that is whether you use variables in CSS. Just like many other languages, variables in CSS are used to store a value. Then it is easy to use and reuse it by calling the variable name again. Thanks to that, we do not need to remember color codes or complex values, ensuring the synchronization of the design. This is a big turning point that changes the CSS game. Favored by large libraries such as Bootstrap, Tailwind CSS. In fact, when using CSS variables, we have a higher level. That is property variables. In this video, I will help everyone master this feature completely. And especially, the knowledge I share at the end of the video is very special that everyone will not be able to find anywhere else. So please watch until the end of the video. To begin, let's first learn about variables in CSS and their disadvantages. Here I have a box element. Normally, if I want to change the background color, I just use the background color property with the color code I want. However, if in a specific project, we will need to use this color code many times. So to make it easier to remember, I will declare a variable named danger color that can be used on the entire page. And from now on, when I need to use this color code, I just use the VAR function with the value being the corresponding variable name. When the variable value changes, the color of the box element will also change accordingly. And that's how to use variables in CSS. Now let's come to its disadvantages. When using variables in CSS, there is a feature that helps change the value of that variable called inheritance. That is, if the value of that variable is initially blue, but in smaller classes, we can still change the value of this variable to another color. For example, I will change it to red. But if at the main element, I continue to change it to yellow, the box element will change to yellow. Because this main element is closer to the box tag. So what's wrong? Is this a good thing? Yes, the ability to inherit and change values is a very impressive feature. But in some cases, if I don't want to get the new inherited values, but always get the original color blue, this is completely impossible. We have absolutely no power to prevent the inheritance of a particular variable in CSS. The initial default value of the danger color variable is a color code, and it is used to color the background of the box, right? There would be nothing to say if the user just changed its value to another color code. But if the user changes the value of this variable to 50 pixels, at this time, the value of this variable is no longer a color, resulting in the background color of the box tag being destroyed. Because according to this code, the value of background color is 50 pixels, and it is completely invalid, because the new value is a unit of length measurement, not a color. In large projects, when there is more than one person writing CSS, sometimes this happens, two people use the same variable name, but for different purposes. This will accidentally cause the other person's code to break because the change value is not valid for the property used. And this is the second disadvantage. Variables in CSS cannot check the input and will receive any value set. And that's why properties in CSS were born. When using CSS properties, people can declare variables as follows. Using the property symbol, the variable name, and inside will contain its default settings. First, I will set it up to be similar to the way to create a normal variable. Syntax is the type of value accepted when updating, using the asterisk character to indicate accepting all values. Inherits defaults to true to always allow it to be inherited. And finally, the initial value. So it works. First, let's talk about inheritance. By default, its inheritance is exactly the same as the normal variable declaration. The value that the box tag will receive is the value of the variable that was most recently changed. But if we don't want this box tag to inherit the danger color value, instead it will always take the original default value. Then we just need to change true to false. At this point, the inheritance feature is disabled. In the case of allowing inheritance to change the value of the variable, we all know that this variable is created to contain the color code, right? But if when updating, the user changes the value of this variable to a value other than color, that will affect the related lines of code. For example, this background color will become background color 500 pixels, and it is an invalid value. This will cause the design to break or be very damaged. So how to prevent this? How to check if the input is valid or not? Only if it is valid, use that value as the new value for the variable. 
This is very simple with CSS properties. In the syntax, you just need to replace the asterisk character with color. At this time, the system will only accept new values as color codes, if not color codes. It will not take and keep the original default value. If the new value is a valid value, it will accept this new value. And that's how variable properties in CSS work. Now, I'll add something special that you won't find anywhere else. By creating gradient border animation, I will tell everyone a great advantage that CSS documents have not mentioned. In fact, we can directly create a border gradient with a line of CSS code. However, that method still has certain limitations. If anyone is interested, you can leave a comment and I will guide everyone to create it. In this example, I will use the virtual element before in CSS. This is a virtual element created with only CSS without any additional declaration in HTML, and it will be inside the box element. To be able to set the before element to always have the same size as the box, I will use the position property. At this time, just set the width and height of before to always be 100% of the box size. I'll temporarily move it to the right for easier viewing. With the border radius value inherited from the box element, to create a circular gradient background effect, in CSS we have conic gradient. Zero degrees is the position where the gradient is first filled. Then there will be a list of colors that we want to create the gradient. Based on this, we can realize that if we want this background gradient to rotate in a circle, we just need to change the value from in the conic gradient, right? So here I create a variable angle used to store the value from of the conic gradient. The initial value is zero degrees. When this element runs the animation named auto rotate, then the value of this variable angle will increase, leading to the position from in the conic gradient will also change, thereby creating a rotation animation. But no, this transformation failed to produce the rotation animation I wanted. Instead, the conic gradient's rotation angle shifted to 180 degrees instantly instead of creating a gradual rotation. This is the biggest drawback when using variables in CSS. But if I now use a property to declare this angle variable, can this error be fixed? If we set the values for this variable by default, the result is no different from the normal way of declaring variables. Animation will not happen. But if instead of allowing all values in the syntax, we clearly define the value type of this variable, for example, this is an angle value, then the syntax here is angle. Now the animation has taken place. The reason for this is as follows. When using variables in CSS to create animations, by default, the system will consider the value of the variable as a normal string. And when the value of the string changes, it will change immediately. But with properties, when the syntax is clearly declared, the system will understand what type of value this variable is containing. Then the system will increase or decrease the value of that variable according to the type declared in the syntax, thereby creating animations. If you want it to rotate in a circle, the transform value must be 360 degrees. And that's also the advantage that few documents tell you. Now, I'll finish this exercise of creating a border gradient. Along with before, we also have a virtual element after with similar usage. But for after, I temporarily move it down to make it easier to see and use the blur filter to create a gradient shadow effect. So the block creation is done. Now I just need to move before and after to overlap the original box element. Let's remove all the original displacement properties. Combine left top and transform to make before and after always be in the center of the box element. Now to be able to see the box tag, we have to move these two virtual elements to the back with Z index minus one. However, at this time, everyone will see that the blur of after is still moving, but the element before has completely disappeared. Simply because the size of before and box is equal, and now the box has covered the entire element before. Now we just need to add padding to before. By default, when adding padding to a specific element, it will increase the size of that element, thanks to which we can see it. In some cases, if after adding padding, the size of the before tag still cannot increase. The most common reason is that it is being affected by the box sizing property that you have declared somewhere. At this time, you just need to unset box sizing to fix the above error. And this is the entire content of this video that I want to share with everyone. The video may have been longer than I expected, but because I want everyone to understand it as clearly as possible, as well as its advantages and disadvantages, I have to talk in more detail. 
Thank you everyone for watching this video. If everyone is interested in programming and web design content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to follow many more interesting videos. Thank you everyone. See you in the next video.